And I know some of the Republicans are a little bit taken aback by you jumping in, and, and some are saying, well, it's not really fair to Elise Stefanik and such. Um, you know, is it fair to Elise Stefanik to come into the race so late? Well, I, I don't think that the, it's late at all. I mean, there's two weeks before petitions. Um, you know, take a little history, step back. I mean, I had a primary in 2010. I had a primary in 2012. So I do believe in competition. Um, and I don't remember an outcry of uh, anti-primaries uh, in those two times, which is fine. I believe in competition. So that's, I think that's one historical perspective. Um, you know, and secondly, uh, typically, you know, you'd be endorsed, you know, a week or two before. Um, and so from a timing perspective, you know, part of why we, uh, why I thought that once we came to our decision, like we talked about earlier, um, you know, two weeks to get uh, petitions and that whole process ready to go, not only for the Republican, but also the conservative independence lines. So, um, so when you say it's late, I, I, to be honest with you, a normal cycle, this is right on time. You didn't go through the uh, endorsement process with the Republican chairs by coming in, you know, after their endorsement. Are you concerned that they may have any sort of negative reaction? Well, uh, yeah, the process, you know, was uh, almost half over by the time Mr. Owens retired. And as we talked about, I mean, that was a shocking development. Uh, I was certainly stunned. I mean, most people I've talked to were quite surprised. Um, and so that process, you know, had already had a start and was almost through the middle. And, you know, as, as I told you before, um, it's a very tough personal decision for my wife and I. You know, we have a seven-month-old now. And, you know, we had to do a lot of analyzing of the race to see how it would impact us. We had to think long and hard about the impact it would have on our lives, not only today through the campaign, but in the future. Um, if I was fortunate enough to be selected by the great voters here on the 21st, I mean, that's, that's you know, going from the private sector to the public sector, and that's a big change. And then make sure that we have, you know, the skills and that we have a message to offer voters here. And so we had to do a lot of soul searching, but also a lot of just analysis to come to all that. So, I mean, again, in a typical cycle, you know, you would get endorsed, you know, literally a week before petitions would go out. There was an early petition process, and the po process had played out to a certain extent in the, uh, a large port already before the world changed when uh, this became an open seat. Yeah, I mean, one of the emails that came in this afternoon was, you know, where, where were you when the incumbent was running? Um, would you have made this decision if Bill Owens hadn't retired? No. I would not have made this decision. No. So for our purposes, we haven't had a chance to see you. Uh, why the decision to run? And going back to you know the night of uh, the 2012 election, tough loss, one of the closest in the country, and uh, obviously back-to-back -back, uh, defeats to Mr. Owens. And look, it's very tough running as a challenger against incumbent. I mean, there's a reason that you have you know high 90s percent of incumbents get reelected. Um, and, you know, Mr. Owens is a formidable uh, opponent, as you guys know. Uh, he is, you know, far from a leftist. Uh, he had a lot of Republican support because of his moderate positions, and a lot of positions were conservative, to be fair. A rating in the NRA, in favor of uh, hydrofracking, things like that. Um, and you get to a point where, you know, it's just time to move on. And so, you know, we went back and, and, and decided that we're going to dedicate ourselves to business and starting a family, which we, you know, successfully did. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Owens says, oh, I'm out, and retires. Again, very shocking. And, you know, we got, you know, we stopped counting at 500 emails, phone calls, it's encouraging us to get in. We said, well, all right, let's at least think about it, and more calls. I mean, I'd get postcards. I mean, I'd get, you know, boxes of things saying, you know, you got to run. I mean, I, I went to a Saturday. I went to Target just to buy our son, you know, a couple of new shirts. Three people stopped me in different aisles saying, you got to run. And the newspapers, not only in Watertown, but also in Falls, said, you know, please get in. And so you realize, you know, there's some an opportunity there. And we did it work. I'm a businessman. I analyze things. We look at data. You know, it's not feelings, but data. And so we, you know, we looked at the polling. First question, you know, should Matt Doheny have a you know, third chance? And it was like a six or seven to one ratio. I said, you're like, That was remarkable. And then certainly, you know, some of the other issues. And we realized that the district, um, a little bit different than last time. You know, President Obama was not going to be on the ballot. And so it's just a different situation overall. And look, it's open seat versus taking on a very popular uh, incumbent, uh, which is entirely different. And so, again, it was more about a personal decision. And that the same things I talked about in 10 and 12, 
uh, in terms of putting my business skills forward. Tom Zerv, now after doing all the work, I mean, I do know the district. I've been to all the 194 towns and cities. Yeah, I know the difference between, between Peru and Wilton and Greenfield and Messina. I mean, I, I just understand it. I understand the sub-regional economies. Certainly here in Plattsburgh is a far cry from Wilton outside of Saratoga Springs, far cry from Old Forge in the middle of the Anirondacks, far cry from Augensburg or, uh, or Alex Bay on the uh, St. Lawrence River. You just have to know all these things. And so not only my experience in terms of being a businessman and creating jobs, which we still you know, desperately need in the North Country, experience understanding the local economy, and then realizing that you know, I do have, I'm from the North Country. I do have deep roots. This is where we're, I'm living. This is where I'm going to live. This is where my son was born and will live. And we want to make sure that we have the best possible environment. And if we can do anything about it, to make sure that not only our son, but everyone's children and grandchildren all over the district have the opportunities that I was fortunate to have growing up in Alex Bay and other people all over the district to make sure we uh, be part of that solution. And you talked about the poll. You talked about the editorials, the Watertown Daily Times, mm -hmm. basically calling for you and Daryl Albertine to sure. get into the race. How influential was that, you know, the poll, and then having editorial writers say, we need someone like Matt Doheny in the race. Well, you can imagine, Tom. I mean, think about it. Uh, you know, I had two, two of the closest races in the country. You covered them both, right? I mean, you had 1,900 votes and 4,900 votes. You know, two, uh, 10 or 12 closest races in the country. And so you move on. And all of a sudden now, the papers that you read <laughs> are saying, you got to get in. And people you see in the community, you better run. Political leaders are saying, you, we, you should really think about it. I mean, it does have an impact. There's no question. But it had to be right for my family. It was, you know, our son was the most important thing in, in my wife's and I relationship to say, like, because, again, like the old adage, you know, it's not beanbag playing politics at this level. And so we have to understand the challenges, not only through a campaign, but also if we were fortunate enough to be successful to go to Washington and how that would impact our lives. Um, and so we got to a place where my, my wife said, okay, do it. It's the right thing. I think it's the right thing for the district. I think we can, we can, uh, we can do it as a family. Certainly the editorial writer picked up on the fact that both of the candidates chosen by the county chairs have uh, very few ties, long-term ties, to mm -hmm. the North Country. Was that a big factor in your deciding to get in? Well, it, because right now it's so fluid. I mean, we're going to have a primary and a Republican side to be multi-candidates, whether it's two, three, or four, to be, to be Dermond. Uh, on the Green Party side, there might be a Green Party primary. That's democracy in action right there, Tom. And then with the Democrats, I think it's a very fluid situation. So you could have primaries, which I, I, like, I'm not a political scientist, but I don't think it's atypical to have an open seat where you have you know, a lot of interest and in, in a lot of competition. Again, I had primaries in 10 and 12. I mean, do not forget that. So I've faced voters four times. And so I respect that, and, and, I, and I think that's the way to go. So when you think about, um, going back to you know, your question, um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly those things, you know, influence you when you think about it. And, and uh, again, you have to make the right decision for you and your family, you know, when we, we came to our decision. Will you play up the fact that you have deep roots here? You're from here? You grew up I, here? I always and have. How, how Look, growing up, I was Alex Bay. I was a hockey player, right? And so I, I know the two coldest rinks in the North Country are Alex Bay and Rouse's Point, okay? I know that. Norwood, Norfolk, that was close, okay? Not Messina, not Augensburg, not where, you know, Plattsburgh High plays or Old Mount Assumption, Seton Catholic, then St. John's or Malone, although Malone is pretty cool too. This is where I'm from. This is what, you know, this is grow up. And whether it's, you know, uh, you know, all over from Lake Placid to Saranac, back down to Watertown, this is where I'm from. And this is where, uh, you know, I've been living for the last six years, and this is where I try to run for Congress and continue to do so. My son was born in Watertown. That's where everything we own is in Jefferson County, for God's sakes. So, yeah, of course, I played it up in 10 and 12, and I will continue to talk about how I care about the area because it's where I'm from. I'm only one from one place on earth. It's called the North Country. And Republicans and Democrats alike, though, party leaders, other politicians are downplaying the importance of having strong ties to the North Country. Do you disagree? I, I think this is why you got to go see voters. Voters make decisions like that. And, again, I had a primary, knockdown, dragout primary in 2010, two tough elections in the 10 and 12 in the general. Voters will decide what's important. Matt, um, Bill Owens is not the only one retiring from Congress. Uh, we've seen quite a few incumbents announce on both parties mm -hmm. that they're leaving. Uh, Congress is at one of the lowest <laughs> <laughs> you know, levels of, of uh, support from, from the public that we've ever seen. Yeah. Was that, you know, when you see people who've been in Congress for so long, 
have been respected in the past, mm -hmm. leaving, and you see the support levels for Congress so low, was that a factor that you looked at? And if so, why did you decide you'd <laughs> want to go to Congress? Great question. The answer is yes. It's certainly, again, uh, you know, when you invest in companies and, 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 and turn around, whether it's organizations, companies, you, you have to look at all those details, right? It's important. So I, absolutely, we looked at it. But I will also tell you that sometimes to be a successful businessman, you have to go ahead and get involved in situations that aren't exactly popular, that aren't exactly obvious at that day. And at some point, Congress's approval it gets down to a level where it's almost like, you know, do, do their parents and their coworkers turn on them as well? And I know it's funny to say that, but I do think that there's an opportunity that, you know, we, we'll talk about through the campaign over the next, you know, seven, eight months, uh, that Congress does need to continue to drive, you know, the agenda forward for the American people. And, you know, elections, you know, cure, you know, sometimes cure or sometimes cause things. And, you know, where the American people stand certainly gets reflected through their representatives and the two different uh, houses, whether the senator or the house or in obviously the presidency. And I say that because, you know, we do need to advance the country, that we have to keep things moving forward. And so, you know, I've certainly done business deals with people that, quite frankly, I just didn't like very much. Did I still do a deal with them? Oh, yeah. Because no one wins that way. And, and to a similar extent, you know, sometimes you know, when you think about how do we keep the country moving forward, you know, you have to basically, you know, put your common sense hat on and do that. So as an investor, when a stock gets beaten down, when a company looks terrible, I mean, I'm on the board of Kodak. I mean, we, there were some dark days with Kodak. And, you know, you go in there, that's a great time to get involved. And so in an ironic way, I think it's a unique opportunity uh, to, uh, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected, that to try to um, do more and more importantly, do more for the North Country. What have you learned in your past two campaigns that will help you in this campaign and if you get elected in Congress? Sure. And we thought about that a lot as well um, because, you know, whether it was 150 or 200,000 miles, you realize you can spend a lot of time driving from here to there, maybe with or without cell phone coverage. So the understanding and experience I have with the district, I mean, is truly deep. And so knowing what are the important events, knowing the people, and having a personal relationship with them now really helps a lot. And sometimes you have to realize that you, know, you can't get to every event and you have to block out your schedule accordingly. Some of the blocking and tackling, you only can get to in this, this massive a district by experience into realizing how you have to stage things. And that sounds like, oh, yeah, it's a small piece. But if you think about it, you only have X amount of days in the campaign. And you don't want to waste them you know, in having no cell phone coverage in the Adirondacks, right? I mean, it seems funny, but it's truly you know, an issue. So the experience I've had with people getting to know the great people all over the diff different sub-regions to the understanding of the district, the, the terrain, topography to know how to get from here to there. Um, but most importantly, the issues. I mean, it really comes down to the issues. You know, when I've talked to, ten, I mean, at this point, you know, tens of thousands of people over, you know, you just meet so many people and understanding, you know, what people care about. And, you know, that was just reaffirmed, you know, when we started a family and, you know, realizing we have, you know, another human being and, and our son is wonderful, that, you know, it, there is a different perspective. And sometimes you do need to go through fatherhood to understand that perspective, and I get it now. And you talked about some of the issues. Uh, since you first ran in 2010, the economy has improved. Mm -hmm. uh, Farm bill isn't has been finally settled. Right. What issues are priority one for you? Just yeah, it's, it's still job creation because while it wasn't as calamitous as it has been, it's certainly not where it needs to be now. For instance, in, in Jefferson County, Watertown, where I live, unemployment rate is the second highest in New York State, only behind the Bronx. Unacceptable. And so a lot of counties have similar challenges. So it's still going to be job creation. It's still going to be continuing economic growth and vitality, making the pie bigger. There is so much things, good things that happen when the pie gets bigger and there's more resources to go around. It helps the local governments. It helps you know, create the opportunities for young people, professional people, uh, you know, for people who might have had some challenges before. It creates those opportunities. And so that is why I will continue to be focused and talk about that. That's priority number one. I know with my skill set, I know I can truly make a difference in the North Country. Number two, Obamacare. I mean, it, you know, it's just one of those things where it's so important in terms of our national economy and everyone's health is important to them. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of those themes and exact things I said in 2012 have come to fruition, unfortunately. And it wasn't because I was hoping that, but I just knew from a practical standpoint. And you're seeing that at the popularity of Obamacare 
And you know, it's hard to find somebody that will walk up and say, hey, I am just excited to be on Obamacare. Like, I just haven't met that person yet. And I've heard, unfortunately, you know, a lot of stories of the exact opposite, where it's going to cost us and it's going to challenge us to continue on with the structure, with the employment, with the people that we have right now. So that's the second. And then third is maybe even more close to home, which is good old-fashioned community and uh, constituent service. And making sure we have a robust staff, you know, robust amount of offices, big districts. You know, people aren't driving from Saratoga to, to uh, go to Watertown to be, visit their congressman or their staff. And to do all those things that people count on. You're the point person. No, I appreciate we have the United States Senator, but they have the entire state. And so there's one person just from our North Country uh, taking care of the 717,000 people in the 21st. So everything from Social Security to immigration and all topics in between, that we will have a robust staff. And I just think that's part of the service part of being a, uh, an elected official, that people count on you and you get, they need to have you know, services just like when they're dealing with you know, a not-for-profit or for a business or for any other type of organization that they count on. If I remember correctly, you were calling for the appeal the repeal of Obamacare oh, yeah. in 2012. Nationally, it seems the Republican Party has backed off of that. Are you still a well, firm believer that it should be repealed I mean, altogether? It should be repealed, and there's, there's this common sense thing. And part of, you know, I look forward to over the course of the next seven, eight months of this campaign is talking about some common sense things that I think we can go ahead and implement. Because, look, there's always challenges. I mean, certainly uh, here in the North Country, the rural nature um, and the uniqueness of our hospital and our health care system you know, deserves, you know, sort of a more of a micro targeted effect as opposed to, you know, look, down south they have for profit hospitals. We don't have any for profit hospitals. I visited every hospital. We don't have any for profit hospitals here. They're not for profit, they're clinics uh, and the like. And so, you know, there's targeted things that can go ahead to cure the challenges that we have uh, as opposed to just turning over the entire uh, health care system to the federal government and the challenges, not the least of which is like the first 15 person. Uh, unelected body called IPAB, the Independent Payment Advisory Board. It just, I, I think, when people f fully understand when that actually happens, which it hasn't yet, they're going to. You're going to see a similar reaction of the outcry we've already seen so far with Obamacare. And you talked about that two years ago. I sure. remember. Last question for me. Do you have another question? Uh, yeah, I was thinking. You mentioned earlier that you know you've become a parent. You got married since the last campaign, or. I think it was during the last. Yeah, we we, we got we, we got married during the campaign, but yes, we. And you've uh, become a father since Declan the last was, campaign. We, exactly. You said that it changed your perspectives a little bit. It did. How did it change it, and how will it affect your campaign? Uh, it, it changes because you understand, like when people talk about families, that it's not just you anymore. That your your you, you know, your hopes in in your uh, your love and your life, you know, are with that small child, or you know, as it you know, grows up, and so. It really thinks it makes you focus more about the future and about the opportunities, not just for your child, but for everyone's kids and grandkids and nieces and nephews and so on. And to think about where are we going as a North Country? And look, there's differences, you know, between the, <laughs> one side of the mountain or other, uh, whether you live in Plattsburgh or Peru versus you live in Augensburg, Messina, or Watertown. But we still live in a similar area of a rural North Country. And when you think about what the future wants that you want it to be like and I'm just giving voters a choice at this point to with my skill set my experience my deep north country roots and say do you think I can do the job and make things better here in the north country for everyone and I'll get in one last quick quick question I know you got to hit the road disappointed that Doug Hoffman uh, put out the statement he did today basically saying that uh, you that Johnny come lately shouldn't get in the race and that uh, you should have Elise Stefanik be the, be the nominee I uh, haven't seen the statement, um, but again, there's two weeks to petitions and there's still a lot of snow on the ground. And again, I've done this twice before where uh, county committees usually endorse, um, you know, a week or two before. And with my, Mr. Hoffman in particular, I was the endorsed candidate of all the county committees and he did primary me. So um, it, we'll just leave it at that. Primaries are a good thing for voters. When you have an open seat and when you have people uh, again, rightfully so, doing out, going out and doing the work. That I don't understand why choice is a bad thing. We love having choice in most of our lives as Americans. We have, you know, we're blessed with an abundance of choices, from the grocery store to, seems like 10,000 channels on TV anymore. So I think it's a good thing.